Hi, welcome to my channel, Jabbertang. I have three examples right here under the title Use Polar Coordinates to Find the Limit. This is for Victor Calculus. And let's get started. First one. Use polar coordinates to find the limit. Well, if R and theta are the polar coordinates of the point X, Y, with r being greater than or equal to zero r is a length so we could write r approaches zero from the right as x and y approaches zero zero also we want to keep in mind that x squared plus y squared equals r squared and x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta Here's the first problem that was on the first slide. Limit x cubed plus y cubed over x to the second plus y to the second as x y approaches 0 0. The bottom one x square plus y square we could replace it with r square. The top part we're going to use x and y from here. So that's r cosine and that's r sine cubit, cubit, and that's r squared. Apply the third inside. I have r cube, cosine cube. Of course, when we write the cube, we're right on top of cosine, not on top of the angle. r cube, sine cube, with a plus or addition, over r to the second. Uh, this video is not going to be lengthy, by the way, even though it's three examples. But that's my style. I try to write the notes with clear uh, handwriting, even though I don't have the best handwriting. But I slow down and write it in a way that you could read it. And I use colors to highlight things. Uh, this way, I think it saves a lot of time from whoever is watching the video to see enough in less time. And you could go back to it and pause the video and look at the notes. On the timestamps at the bottom, you will see in the description that I'm going to break it down to three examples. So you could click on the first example. And if you feel like you don't need to watch the first example all the way to end to go to the second example, just click on the second example. And here we go. So doing the algebra here and simplifying, I end up with R cosine cube plus R sine cube. Notice that I could pull the r to the third outside, cancel two of them with r to the second, and that should do it. Now, if r approaches zero, this is going to approach zero, and this is going to approach zero, so the whole thing is zero. There is no need to show more details and more steps. Sometimes it's easier than what you think. Let's take the second example. In this example, notice I kept the same topic and I kept those on the side that's to help me and help you guys go faster and keep things focused sometimes on the side I want to support my work so I do the following on the side let's take a look the limit of x to the second plus y to the second len x to the second plus y to the second as x and y approaches zero zero well the minute that you see this you should keep in mind that this is polar language. It's easier to convert to polar and do it. Here we go. That's r to the second. And that's r to the second. So we have limit of r approaches zero from the right, as we mentioned earlier, of r to the second, len r to the second. Now, how do you approach this? We're not going to write directly apply zero here and zero here the right way the best way is rewrite this whole thing as a fraction flip this and rewrite it as 1 over r to the second if you take this back changing this division to multiplication that's going to uh, look like r to the second over 1 which is this one now here that's a negative infinity over infinity form form why is that? Len r to the second 
well lin r or lin x goes this way right that's the lug but because now it looks like i could plug in natives that means i'm on the right and on the left how about one over r to the second if you remember the reciprocal rule one over x and one over x to the second so that's pretty much one over r to the second if this is one over x it's gonna look like this first and third quadrant because this is gonna end up positive that's not gonna show down here it's gonna show up and you know it curves more down here but that's not the point the point is like how it looks like to be confident all right so we know how the denominator behaves towards zero and we know how the numerator behaves towards zero and that's to show why this is negative infinity and why this is positive infinity one more time we're gonna ap apply Lobter's rule we know how to find the derivative of let's say r to the minus 2 as a power which is right there simplified anything that is like lin u the derivative will be 1 over u times u prime so doing it that's 1 over r to the second times u prime which is the derivative of r to the second that's 2r I know it's kind of lengthy, but I'll break it down here if you need to see the details. Here we go. That's the main fraction bar. Change it to multiplication. Flip this. Simplify between R's and the 2's, and you end up with a minus R to the second. Okay, this whole package simplifies to minus R to the second. I could just skip, but I'm displaying it for you. You could hit the space bar and pause and look at it if you want. Here we go. Now we have limit of negative r to the second as r approaches zero from the right. That's it, zero. Now the first problem was zero, and the second problem was also zero. The third problem, of course, we're going to pick something that's not zero. So here we go. Here's the third problem. One more time, I kept the same thing, kept those handy, and this is just to support my steps limit e to the power minus x square minus y square subtracting one out of that all over x to the second plus y to the second you could see that is the polar form language so we're gonna go as r approaches zero from the right e to the minus r if you pull the minus outside that becomes negative of x square plus y square which is negative r minus one over r to the second that should be r to the second, by the way. That's my mistake. It's a typo. Not, uh, when I re-record the video, but I think you should uh, follow me and appreciate that this is r to the second. It's kind of hard to go during the video and fix it. But we'll move on. Why this is 0 over 0? Well, y equals e to the minus r or e to the minus r to the second same idea trust me this is how it looks like if you have this should be r to the second by the way if it's r to the second you're gonna end up with native uh, a very small amount as 1 over e to the r because it's a fraction once you have large amount of r right and left you're gonna end up with a large denominator so the whole thing is gonna approach zero and notice that if r is native here that's gonna end up approaching zero from the left but since we have r to the second that's gonna end up positive all right that's what i mean so bottom line just to support that that should be coming this way and if r approaches zero when this approaches zero e to the power zero is one one over one so you're gonna approach one enough of that let's go back to the problem it's good now that i noticed that it's e to the minus r to the second this is my mistake earlier it's so obvious that this should be minus r to the second and it's right there Using Lovita's rule, 
the derivative of e to the u is e to the u times u prime. So e to the minus r to the second times derivative of minus r to the second is minus 2r. Derivative of r to the second in the denominator is 2r. Notice the two cancels, the r cancels, and you end up with minus e to the minus r to the second. Applying 0, that's going to be minus e to the power 0. Notice that I am applying it and I have no reason why not to apply it. And that's going to be no need for the limit to be written. And that's a minus 1. One more time, that's minus r to the second. It's not minus r, this is a typo. But it's already fixed here and it's obvious. And it's kind of hard to go back and re-record the video for that. Uh, it's about 11 minutes, 12 minutes. I think that should do it. If there, if you are interested in more, just me, let me know uh, in the comments below. And I will add more as we go. Uh, I usually write notes between classes or during the days. And I record on Saturday or Sunday. Uh, I'll be more relaxed and I could record and edit and upload. So if you have more questions, uh, this is a response to one of the comments in the discussion, if you'll notice, about powers uh, or uh, polar form. So I made three, a video for three questions. But if you feel like you need more, you could type in the chat in the description down below or in the discussion. Uh, your question try as much as you can to be clear and I'll get back to you I will I know it's kind of hard to write math symbols but if you make it clear enough that I could translate that equation to my word document I will do the math and I'll get back to you thank you for watching thank you thank you for watching if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.